twist the white ones together from the power strip and from the female plug, the male and the female. Twist the two whites together. Okay, here's the uh, three you have on the back. We're going to call this one A, this one B, and this one C. You're going to take the two white that you've twisted together and place them into this one C. There's little screws here. They do not come out, but when you screw them up as far as they can go, being gentle with it because it is plastic, it's going to stop or stop right there, so you don't want to overdo it. And then you're going to slide the two wires together into the bottom of that little hole, and then you're going to torque this down. Not too much pressure, but get it snug where it won't come out. We're going to go ahead and do that. There you have it. That's one done. Okay, next you're going to locate the side that has the power plug, the black from that one, and you're going to put it with our four or five inch piece we cut off and stripped on both sides. And we're going to mix, uh, we're going to twist those two together. You're going to grab them, twist those two together, and we're going to place those into the one we're going to call B. Do the same thing, loosen up the screw. Place those two inside the box there. And when you're doing this, make sure that you don't have, if they're too long or if they don't want to twist up like this, just untwist them a bit. Get them loose again like that, both of them. And then kind of intertwine them before you start like that. And if they're too long, trim them back a bit. This one may need to be trimmed back just a bit because you don't want them to short out in the box because that they're too long and they're touching in the box. So I'm going to go ahead and take that one, snip it out about right, just a little off of it. There. Take that one, get it down in the box. There we are. I don't know if you can see that, but it's in the second position. Okay, we're going to move on to the next one. Okay, now we're going to be working. We're not going to put nothing in this top A slot at all today. We're going to move on to this one here. It's A, B, and C. We're going to take the jumper that we have here, and we're going to place that into C, per the instructions. Loosen up the screw, going through the bottom, looks like it's a little long, and there we have that. Next we're going to take the black from the cord here, which I should have looked at when I was doing, we're going to take that one and put it into the second position called B. We have A and B. We're going to take this black one and put it into B. Okay, we're going to take the black one and put it into the front B slot. Loosen it up. It's a little cramp from my big fingers, so just use some needle nose pliers. Get it in there. Torque that down a bit. Too much. I want to break that housing. You do that, you're done. Check all the old ones. That one can be tightened up. I'm gonna go back over it. This one's coming out the slot A. We're gonna go ahead and fix that one, but so when you come back, you'll see it. But I got B done. Okay, we've gone ahead and tightened those wires up in the A rear The A has nothing. B has the jump wire and the black coming from the power. The two whites are twisted together in slot C. Then we have the jumper in A, B, C. We have the jumper put into A. Then we have the black left over from the, power, uh, from the uh, plug's female side goes into this B slot. And then we're going to twist the two green ground wires together, add a little uh, cap, and then we're going to go around that one time with some black electrical tape. And that'll be it.
you have it. Smash that down inside the box. Looks like I got a little splice right there. So what I'm going to do, take a little bit of electrical tape, about three or four inches. Just so we don't have anything shortening up. Kind of snipped it when I was going after it with the razor blade. We're just going to make sure nothing shorts. I'm going to tape that up there, starting at the bottom, rolling up the top. There you have it. Can't short out now. You can just place that inside the box and then make sure it's all neat where nothing is going to short out. Bring that back down and replace your cover. Place your cover. Be gentle. And then tighten up the three, four screws. Excuse me. I'm going to also, where I have the wires at, run over to the store, electrical shop, get me a rubber grommet that'll seal that bottom that's open because I'm going to use this on both cold and hot applications. I'm going to use it to keep regulate my hot plate for my smoker and then I'm going to switch it over to heat. I mean if that's for the heat, I'm going to switch it over to the cold and have it for uh, controlling the temperature for my beer when I'm doing uh, different loggers. Alright, so far that's it. Now we just have to test it there you have it folks. We're about to test it right now. I wanted to also point out that I have a uh, reset switch on here. In case it pops a fuse or anything, I can just press the reset button here and it'll reset it before it damages my electrical, hopefully before it damages my electrical uh, temp controller. We're going to go ahead and plug it in. I thought you should see this in real time before I plug it in. <laughs> we'll both know if it works. So I'm going to pull and plug the wire in to an outlet. And there you see it's got a reading. I don't know if you can see that. Yep, it's 72 degrees. That's showing you the temperature in the house. And in order to use this, you'll first say, press the set button. And you want Fahrenheit or Celsius. Uh, what do you want the degree set at? 83. How much of a difference you want? One degree, two degree, three degree, depend on your application. And then set again. H stands for hot. C stands for cold. So you can use this for two different applications. For cold stuff, it's like in refrigeration or hot stuff, as in smoking or um, um, heaters and stuff like that. Air conditioning is for cold stuff. But as you do, as you hit it and you set it. So right now I'm going to set this, let's say, for the um, smoker that I'm going to be using it for. So I can hit set. Fahrenheit set. 83. Let's see, I start off at uh, 160. What's good about this, it goes up to 200. I'm going to set this for 160. For guys out there who know who works with the smokers know that you got to be adjusting all the time. This is great. So I'm going to set that at 160. Set. And I want a differential of uh, about 4 degrees, 5 degrees. You don't want to come in on and off too many times. Say 4 degrees and then say set. And cold, I'm going to go down to H for hot. Set. I'm done. All I do now is drop the, pull, uh, the uh, probe through the smoker and... I'm all set. And you plug your electric hot plate or your heating element into here and it's all set. It'll automatically turn on your heat plate, your heat source, uh, get it up to temperature, put your meat inside, let it go. And you're all set. No more opening the doors, trying to find out what the temperature is, no more reading analog dials, wondering if it's you know 10 degrees outside, and, you know, the weather's changed, and you gotta go out there and adjust the dial and open it, lose all your heat. That's all gone with this Ronco digital uh, thermometer. And you're set. It's electronic. We're all finished. Well, 
Thank you, YouTube. Oh, I want to show you some, some other stuff we have, too, before we go. Okay, last before we go, I wanted to show you the analog type. Here's the standard kind that everybody uses from Johnson Controls. You can pick them up over at learntobrew.com. That's where I got mine. But you're going to pay about $45 to $50 for this one. And as you can see, you can just plug your refrigerator or your air conditioning unit into this side here. Plug this side into the wall. Set your gauge here to, say, 30... Uh, 28 degrees and your beer will get colder than any refrigerator can actually go. You can make your refrigerator colder than it can actually do from the factory. Some of them are set about 32, 34 is the lowest they can go, 32 degrees. You can actually set this one down to 20 and it'll get that refrigerator pump until it gets to 20 degrees and it's going to override the um, set manufacturer's temperature. Only difference thing about this, for the same price as this one, maybe a few bucks more, you can actually have this one. This one just does cold, analog. You just set it and you forget it, but you don't know if it's exactly right. With the digital, it's 100% up to one degrees off. It'll come on, off. And it's gonna cost you about $52, $55. And if you wire it up, like, you, like I just showed you, you'll save anywhere from 20, 30, 40 bucks if, from buying it pre-wired. And you saw how easy that was. It took us about 10 minutes, even with a camera in my face. This one comes with a little chain so you can hang it on the back of your cooler or whatever you're using. But this is only for cooler. Whereas this one can be used for hot and cold. Five bucks more, you get this. Or five dollars less, you get this.